Hey everyone, this is Seb Sanford, and I'm not going to react to a trailer on this video. This this isn't a trailer reaction video, but I'm going to break down a short film that I have seen on YouTube throughout the past couple weeks, and like leading up from the end of 2022 up to now. Um, I thought now would be the perfect time to break down this following video that I'm going to show you right now. And it's a little short film that I like to call Blue. Um, it's all in the hands of an animation studio, like uh, a different kind of animation studio, I don't know, uh, in the hands of Playmaker and chief executive named um, Angus Neal. And let me go over uh, two descriptions of what the plot is about this film. Uh, starting off with the home page, that's basically the website on how they made the short film Blue. Um, from storyboards like to poster art and to make make a few changes to what what should have been into the final project. Um, but anyways, here's the first description. Um, Playmakers Blue introduces Jules Reed, a bright, curious 12-year-old still coming to grips with the mysterious disappearance of her mother a few years earlier. Uh, startled, startled awake one night, she discovers something magical in the nearby forest. And narrowly escaping capture, Jules realizes that what she has found is not what it seems, and they are both uh, being tracked by someone. Uh, but we'll get to that near we once we reach the end of the short film and the breakdown. Um, it's, the, that film, it says that the film is dedicated to all the curious young minds of the world and never stop exploring. Let's have a look at the second version of the plot right here, uh, where the stars begin, dot dot dot. That's what you also see on the Blue website, link down below. Um, on a quiet street in a quiet town, a young girl goes to sleep one night and awakens to adventure beyond her wildest dreams, one that will take to the very edge of the universe and beyond. Uh, because Jules is not a regular girl, only she doesn't know it yet. Jules's life has a secret, one that has been following her for a long, very long time. And when, on what starts as a regular school night, uh, a mysterious blue light beckons, an almost regular girl is given the choice, one that could change her life forever. In a quest that will challenge everything she thought she knew, uh, she will uncover the truth about her mother, uh, who disappeared, um, rescue a being who might not be all they seem, and also save planet Earth and time itself from total destruction. And so basically that's what the plot is uh, uh, about this short film. Yep, you'll probably see a little clip of what happened um, when Chief Executive um, Angus McNeil um, described how they made the short film in a press conference from AWS. What's remarkable about, about this film is that every single frame of it was actually rendered in the Unreal Game Engine. Um, it hasn't gone through any form of color correction. It hasn't gone through any form of finishing. It's literally straight out of the Unreal Game Engine, straight onto the screen. Well, obviously go through the editorial process to put the shots together. But it's remarkable the type of quality that you can get on a, out of the Unreal Game Engine now. And yeah, I had no idea that they use that type of technology and animation in that short film. All right, let's go over this short film shot by shot, and I'll describe what's happening in each scene from start to finish, um, except the except the end credits, um, because they don't mean anything to us. Okay, let's start this short film as soon as the screen is recording by itself. Yeah, I believe it is. Okay, starting now. So we start off with a bright um, English, um, um, a bright version of the mood from above. And we the camera starts moving and there's a little quiet town out in the middle of nowhere, or probably somewhere in America. And there's a water tower that is still being operated. And right there, um, you'll see a billboard right here that says, Seen Blue Lights. And it has the hotline um, right below. It says 1-800-CALL-HOME, um, meaning that people might have seen something fall from the sky or pass by planet Earth, uh, making sure, or maybe someone might have seen um, some different life beyond um, the blue planet, I don't know. And, and continuing, and then we see the billboard vanish away by different uh, types of trees. And then we head on over to a little tiny street, um, 
where the following character, the main character, lives. And a car is parked outside the pavement of a different house. Well, the house that we're seeing right now, this is not the house we're seeing. The house that you're seeing now belongs to the character Jules Reed. So we're going um, very slowly through the window of her bedroom. Yeah, a little slowly. It's still going. And then here we are. We have a little tour of Jules's bedroom. And uh, on the on the left corner of the screen of the short film, uh, we see her uh, her name spelled in different letters um, stuck to the wall. And basically, the whole room is filled with all things space because her mother was a scientist working for NASA. And let's continue. And you see a little tiny astronaut figure on one of her shelves. And there's a moon, a model of the moon near near her bed. And and she also has a notebook, um, doing a packing list, um, like to check to see what she has. Like the next time she sees the shooting star passes by, uh, you'll see that in a minute. But the packing list it says um, she checked her backpack and a flashlight in case it get in, in case it gets too dark. And there are some battery batteries this in which she hasn't checked yet, but there are, there's plenty of energy in that flashlight, I think. And there was one object that she crossed off of her packing list, but I, it's hard to figure out what it says. I don't know. But, and there's also um, a, a, a drawing of a blue light um, seen in the northeast at around 9:38 p.m. and and at the top of the piece of paper, it says uh, April 19th and underlined blue lights um, seen in night sky. What does this mean? And she does a ton of um, um, space related drawings in her notebook. Uh, at the top of the title, it says Jules Reed's notebook um, in a square that she drew and it says day 270, uh, no, uh, 237, uh, 230 days since the star passed by the Earth. And we get to see some newspaper articles um, on what the star is, um, and get the questions, and when he, when, he asked, when he answers to the questions of what this blue light is, and new images reveal a mysterious blue light. And one year on and still no answers. And yeah, we see more newspaper articles on the scientist um, Jules' mother, Julia, and who mysteriously disappeared without chase. And, and yeah, and we also see a photo of what Julia Reeds looked like um, um, in a photo of her holding a NASA shuttle, like a ship. Uh, I really don't even know what that is, but I've seen that in a couple space movies or science fiction movies. And yeah, that photo was taken back in 2002, where the article, where the article said on the piece of paper, and it's now, it's now on a photo frame. Um, uh, that that Jules has uh, to remember her by. And anyways, and in comes Julia, and sitting at her desk uh, with a lamp post, um, wait, a lamp light, um, not the Pixar one. That's a different studio. And there's a set of headphones, and we still have her notebook. And there's a water bottle and a mug. And she's typing on her laptop, and she's texting one of her friends. Um, we don't see the whole texts of replying to or getting the texts from he or she. Um, all, all we get to see was her typing see you in the a.m. like in the morning. Uh, and we also see we also see some newspaper articles as well on the web like the Herald Blue Blast Lights of the Northwest. That's on the right side of the screen. We get a close-up of her eyes um, and Jules is still um, looking at the newspaper articles, and I, I don't even know what she's feeling right now. And right now, she's leaning on her chair, looking up at the ceiling, and she closes her eyes, and, and, st and she's still answering the questions that everyone else is asking themselves. Like, and she feels like, like, like I give up. This is it. I'm done. Um, but then, um, wait, at least I think I think... At least I thought what she's thinking right now. Anyway, she closes her laptop and turns off her lamplight, and then she gets all set up for bed. And yeah, you see her in her bed, 
um, reading a, a piece of paper, like a letter that that her mother wrote to her, and at the same time, uh, she's holding in her hand a necklace. Um, I think it was given to her by her mother, and which is, gives us a little hint of where she got it. And we get we don't get to see the full letter, but we get to see the the last sentence at the bottom. And it says, I don't know when I'll return, but when the night sky turns blue, I will be close, dot, 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 love mom, and a little X to represent the kiss and how much Julia loves her daughter. And we don't, yeah, we don't get to see the whole letter uh, because we don't want to add too much detail into it. Uh, anyways, Jules, she puts her necklace inside a little box. Um, she forgot to lock it, by the way. And then now she's looking up into the ceiling and seeing the solar system, um, that, that type of thing that you hang around your room. And I love this new shot right here. I don't even know how Playmaker did that shot uh, using the computer. And we zoom into the planet Earth from above and the United States of America, the, the, that side of the Earth, and and the stars surrounding it, like millions of galaxies, millions of stars. Uh, I, I even see the stars every night on, on, on clear skies. And moving on, and right here, at the clock, uh, a rocket clock that you see on one of her cupboards, and her clock um, starts wi uh, winding up very fast clockwise, and at the same time, her necklace is glowing, which I didn't expect to see. I didn't see that coming. And that means that's connected to the blue light that that is explained in the story, just like in the description. And there's the blue light from outside her bedroom window. And then she she's wide awake, and then and yet yeah, her clock falls to the ground, but we but we don't see it, but we hear a sound effect of her, of it falling down to the ground. And and Jules, she wakes up straight away as as soon as she saw a little bit of the blue light. She hurries, she hurries to the window and sees it passing by, and it's about to land somewhere in the forest. But we don't know which forest it is because looking over that short film again, it's very far away, somewhere in the hills. So she gets her essentials. Um, at first, she gets her flashlight, as said on her checklist, and and she also gets a. And she grabs a candy bar or two and says Robinson on it. That's not actually a real company, but yeah, it was used in a short film. And she grabs her shoes right there, her walking shoes, no sneakers because those are only uh, sneakers are only used for going into town and walking to the park and so on. And she grabs her pack, her backpack straight away off of the hook, uh, over the hanger, and sneaks out of her bedroom through the open window. And then lands on the ground of her garden, uh, almost like a ninja, almost like a ninja. Anyway, she runs away and then goes through, and goes through her fence very secretly. That's so clever. I, I wish I thought of that, but I'm not a kid anymore. Anyways, we get to see a wide shot of her walking in the fields, uh, maybe a cow fields, whilst the moon is still bright in the sky lighting up the night sky, and we see a little windmill on the left, and and yet the rest of the town is left behind. Anyway, she's in the woods, uh, walking around with her flashlight on, uh, but uh, there was a little bit of a movie mistake here that I want to spot out as soon as we get, as soon as we get to it. Anyway, she's looking around to see if there's any, any animals trying to haunt her, like um, coyotes, um, coyotes are in America, and Canada as well. The, um, we don't see any coyotes in the short film, or nor do we see any snakes or any other dangerous creatures. Anyway, she's looking up um, at surrounding trees, like broken trees with no leaves on it, and yep, there's a blue light in the middle of the path that she's about to walk through. And we keep going, and Jules points the flashlight straight uh, directly at the center of the passageway. And then she hears a, and then she hears a sound a little bit. Anyways, we get. Oh, anyways, let's get to that movie mistake. Uh, so one minute she's wearing this green jacket uh, with a camera stamp and a five stamp and a star stamp, 
a, a patch. Uh, they're all patches. You sew them onto your jacket. Right in the next frame, um, her shirt changes into her purple hoodie that she wore in her sleep. So, yeah, it's very important to go over those mistakes to make sure that everything is correct. Make sure that mistake is not featured in that final project. And like, for example, a shadow of the camera and the mic um, um, unmistakably um, showed up in some other live action movies. But what we just seen, going from jacket to jacket, it's very important next time to go over that final project before you spread it worldwide. Anyways, let's keep watching. Anyways, she keeps walking and we go back to the green jacket again. And we move on up uh, to a view of the forest from above and the stars are still in the sky. And yeah, the blue light uh, that the star uh, fell through, it's, yeah, it's very far away like an hour or two walk. Okay, she's still walking, wearing that green jacket. She's almost there to the uh, blue light, the green jacket, and goes from the from there to the purple jacket again. A uh, second moving mistake. Again, um, make sure you go over that shot again. Like, make sure the jacket is correct. And make sure she's wearing the right jacket. Not, um, she's wearing the green jacket, not the purple hoodie. And she looks down below, she looks down below with her flashlight on, it's still on, and she sees a little glimpse of the light, of a little bit of white now, and then she, and then she accidentally falls, she, she accidentally falls t downwards, and then about a couple seconds later, um, her flashlight uh, turns off by itself, probably running out of batteries, and she's lying on the ground. She's completely fine. She's completely fine. And then she wakes up to see she was at the very bottom of the pit. She's at the bottom of the ravine. And then she she tries to stand up after hurting her leg a little bit. Uh, but she's completely fine. She could she can recover. She recovered fast. Anyway, she looks up to see a giant a spherical like um spaceship that came from the light. And almost made out of like um, H2O, like water. Um, one part hydrogen and the other part oxygen. So, so she, I gotta say that that layer looks amazing once you get once you get to look at it. Anyways, the light is getting really closer to Jules. It's getting really closer to Jules, and her eyes are wide open. She she's really attached to it. She can't. She can't take her eyes off of it. Yeah, it's still moving. It's still moving, and Jules uh, walks on over to it. And there are little specks of light uh, all over it. And, and, she, and from her point of view eyes, um, yeah, she's still walking up to that water-like sphere, which probably turns out to be a spaceship. Uh, she reaches her hand up to an edge of the sphere. Her eyes wide open, stream close up. And then she touches it. She actually touches it. Almost feels like touching water. Like, for example, I'm touching a glass of water. Um, and speaking of which, um, my throat is a little dry right now. I'll have a sip of water. <coughs> That's much better. Anyways, moving on. Anyways, she touches uh, the sphere only a little bit. And then it lights up and is about to explode. About to explode. And, and Jules is quite shocked by what she has done so far. And then that sphere, uh, the water-like sphere, and like that was just a layer. That was just the tip of the iceberg type of thing. And now we see a, another layer. And, and this is like the actual, uh, it, it looked like a spaceship. I think that shooting star was like a spaceship, uh, a, a small spaceship, like um, my hand um, representing a circle. There are circles all over it, like a circle that you saw on my glass of water. And there must be someone inside. So it gets really close to her and scans it, and it scans Jules's face. And it starts playing around with her, spinning around in crazy circles. And Jules um, starts smiling and she's feeling really happy. 
and, and then uh, and then the sphere, um, the proper spaceship lifts her up into the air, um, and yeah, she's completely fine. And then it explodes again, but not the ship, but parts of it, and like into little tiny droplets, or probably from different galaxies, different galaxies up close. And I think one of them it nearly looks like the Earth. Um, probably the one on the right. Uh, the one on the right. And she, she closes her eyes. Uh, Jules closes her eyes because she thinks this experience uh, um, is, is breathtaking. It's really breathtaking. That's why she'll never stop exploring. Uh, especially when she's um, finding some answers to the questions about her mother's disappearance. Anyways, um, zero gravity, uh, she's flying through zero gravity oh, uh, with the little tiny spaceship in her hand, uh, spinning around a little bit. And then she lands safely on the ground, and then mysteriously um, beams of light um, point down at the ground in the ravine. And a little hand, uh, those were helicopters. Um, um, and then they point straight directly at Jules, and that means she's been spotted. Like, they think that she's uh, discovered that um, that little spaceship, uh, that little shooting star um, landing down in her little American quiet town. So very quickly, the little spaceship hides, into, hides inside the backpack that Jules was carrying, and then she starts running off really quickly. Um, she doesn't want to get seen again by the helicopters. Are there one or two helicopters? Um, the, I think we only get to see one helicopter, one beam of light from a helicopter. And Jules keeps on running, and then she hides quickly behind a tree until the helicopter passes by, and she doesn't get spotted again. And then, whew, oh, she, she's gone. Uh, the helicopter's gone. Uh, nearly. Yeah, it's gone. And then here we got the shot again of the windmill and and the cow field and the and the mood now very soon covered up by clouds, um, yeah, the cloudy clear skies. And then she hurries on back to her house, a safe and sound, and goes through the open window of her house, uh, her bedroom, um, the open window of her bedroom where she left open before she left to discover that a blue light. Um, who now turns out to be a spaceship. And then she's overexhausted, takes her backpack off and and sits down to have a breather. Her eyes are still wide open and hoping she doesn't get seen by the public, especially in the press. And then the backpack starts moving and um, she thinks it's still the spaceship, um, kicking around a little bit, but we don't see the spaceship anymore. We don't see the small type spaceship anymore. Uh, you'll see why in a minute. Um, and then she looks down very quietly, and she seemed pretty excited when the zipper of her backpack opened up by itself, and then we reveal uh, the little tiny bits outside of this little creature that, that came inside of that little sphere. And then he pops his head open very slowly, very slowly, whilst Jules moves over to take a peek, a little quick peek, and she's still happy, she's still happy. And she's overwhelmed and, and shocked about what she's just seen and carried home with her. And, and we only get to see a little quarter of this little creature called Blue. <laughs> yep, and I gotta see the uh, the eyes are wide open. Uh, they're very huge. Um, one layer of it, um, one layer of the creature's eyes that is uh, are pink, whilst um, the rest of uh, the very middle of it uh, is blue, uh, uh, black. Uh, his eyes are black. Uh, the pupils, and and they're nearly about to touch hands, but, but sadly, this is the last. Uh, this is the last that we see of Jules and the creature that she just picked up. But I feel like I feel like they should expand the story a little bit, like make another short film, or probably make this short film into a full movie. And they they could I think they should make a full movie of of what they have done with the short film, um, Pre Mega Studios and the executive Angus Neal. Yeah, that's that's what happens in my opinion. 
and let's continue. And then we we say goodbye to Jules and throughout the window of her bedroom. And then there's the car from the beginning of the short film. And yeah, what they didn't notice is that someone, that someone in the car is watching them. Watching them. Um, like, is he working for the FBI? Or is he working for NASA? Or probably a search for extraterrestrial life type of company? And and then she, and then he gets a little scan of Jules, nearly about to touch hands with the creature. I mean, how did he do that? Did he get, did he take in any cameras, or did he get a scanner or a camera to put inside her bedroom? Um, who knows? Or maybe he must have done it whilst um, Jules was out, um, and and right before she snuck back into her bedroom. Yeah, I mean, like. Um, this is like a to be continued type of moment, and like this is the third act, uh, part of the th three act structure. I'm getting a little over exhausted by what I've just said and broke down in this video. And then the last shot we see is a little piece of earth uh, that we see in the sky whilst a spaceship slowly enters. But I don't even know what kind of spaceship it is. Um, but probably. Probably to be continued, um, hopefully in a second short film uh, with the creature and jewels in it. And it fades to black, and that's the end of the short film. And that's my breakdown of the short film called Blue. What did you think of this short film, if you've seen it? And did you like the breakdown? Did you like what I've just seen? Um, be sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe today, and turn on those notifications. And you can follow me on my Instagram link in the description. And thanks for watching and stay tuned for more trailer reaction videos on my channel. And right now you can check out my reaction to Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. Yeah, I love the views. I like the positivity and the subscribers that are building up. Everything's great. And with that said, I will see you on another video. And take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.